Nice and tight. If I had to give advice to my younger self, I think that um, this, this applies to everything that isn't fighting, but it, if I'm talking to my younger self, it definitely applies to being a competitor. Um, I would just say that keep going, man. Like, put the things that you're passionate about first. And uh, in spite of all the things that are happening in your life, you know, I mean, uh, your job, your, you know, whatever, girls, all that other stuff, uh, whatever heartbreak you come into, the losses, the wins, uh, this, the that. Uh, remember that, um, remember that what exactly it is that you're, you're passionate about should come first. And the, the things that, the things that make you happy should come first. The things that, the things you have goals and aspirations for should come first. And, uh, all the other things that, that slow you down, that, that, that make you uncomfortable at the time or that make you unhappy at the time, you know, so whatever it is, breakups, losing a job, uh, having to pick up more hours, having to do all that other stuff, like, as long as you get to pursue your dreams at the end of the day and as long as you, you find yourself happy with, with what you're doing at the current moment, then like you just gotta keep going. Think about the task you hand constantly. Like you have to think about um, your body does funny things and your mind does even funnier things in a fight. Like you know I mean you, you naturally you doubt yourself a little bit. Like as you should, like if your mind doesn't start playing with you before the fight, it means something's not right. Like if you think like, oh I'm just gonna walk in there and do my thing, then you know you're not mentally prepared. You're, you have to, on a, on a serious, uh, pragmatic level, you're fighting another grown man in the cage. Nine times out of ten, he's he's trained just like you are. What's your mindset right now, man? Ready to go to work. You know, I mean, whenever I started, try, everybody tried telling your mom that you want to fight people in a cage for a living. And I, I don't know one mom that would be like, yeah, honey, you go get them. My mom was livid when I told her I was leaving school to start fighting, you know? Especially my dad, too. My dad was like, you're, you're not a fighter, son, sorry. Like, he, and he was like, um, <laughs> he was, my dad at first was like, that's, that's just not you, man. And then, you know, whatever, however many amateur titles later, you know, finally, Finally, we came to an agreement as father and son. Like, okay, maybe maybe this is what you're supposed to do. He's six foot nine inches tall, weighing in at 230 pounds. Steve Mowry is six and zero oh, undefeated fighter, taking on Chris Araujo, 28 years of age, six feet tall, weighing in at 260 pounds, with an amateur with an amateur record of three wins and two losses. I had a coach a long time ago who said, "Don't take any shit from anybody." And uh, you know what he was trying to say was like, you know, don't let them get on their game plan. Don't let them implement the things they want to do. It's all about what you want to do. All the other stuff doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're, if you're sick, if you're tired, if you're, you know, whatever. Like, your parents are mad at you. <laughs> I don't know. I can come up with, like, a million examples. But, um, you know, for 15 minutes or 25 minutes, whatever the case is, however long your fight is, um, it's just you in there. You know what I mean? You're, you're going in there. You're going to have a good time. You're going to fight somebody, you know? So you have to keep that in mind. That, that's what helps me stay down there. You know what I mean? The ability to compete alone is a, is a blessing. So why, why wouldn't I focus all my energy onto that? Like, why wouldn't I focus... <clears throat> everything I have mentally, spiritually, physically, emotionally onto the fight itself and just let everything you know, in your life fall into place around it kind of thing. You know, he sat down and he talked to me and he was like, man, this is really something you, uh, really something you should dedicate yourself to. And then he told me how he'd been training forever and how this and that, and I was like, man, now I know. Like, I, I, that's, when it, when, that's when it all dawned on me, because at that point I was enrolled in college and, uh, you know, like trying to figure out what I wanted to do as a real job and like this and that. But that, at that point, it dawned on me, man. Like, um, I completed the full the full process, uh, thought process that was like, I can be I can be 35 and, and go back to school and, and get a job and start a family and this and yeah. I mean, I can be 35 after an awful career, a good career, a so-so career, a forgettable career, a memorable career, and be like. Okay, man. Now it's now it's time to do the next thing. Now it's time to go to school. You know, get, learn a trade, learn a skill, this or that. I figured I'd rather do that than look back at 35 with a you know a job and a wife and a mortgage and kids and pets and be like, man.
man, I really could have been something if I jumped into it right whenever, right whenever I got told I should jump into it, you know. And that, that's when it, it really all came together for me.